I had started the lesson acid, base and salt with acids and the first part of the video was about what are acids, the properties of acids, what do all acids have in common and why acids are so important and how they play a role in our life. Okay, so a quick recap and also we had done about indicators, the different types of indicators. That was about acids, acids are substances, acids reactions with litmus paper, acids reaction with phenolphthalein, acids reactions with methyl orange, all was your previous. Then the olfactory indicators, the types, vanilla essence, clove oil and onion strips. The activities are given in your book, in your NCRT book, which you should do very clearly for your board exam, LMR. All the activities can be your board exam questions, which they will ask for assertion reasoning, competency based and MCQs. Don't miss the any activities which are there in your NCRT book. Okay, then we had done with the chemical properties of acids. How do the acids react with uh, metals? What gas is produced? Then how is that gas tested? If you recollect hydrogen gas, how it is tested, pops out. Then the reaction of metal carbonates with acid, metal bicarbonates with acid, the products formed there. Then how is CO2 tested, the presence of CO2 in lime water or was the previous one. Hyacids with hydronium ions are the common feature which all acids have. Concentrated acid, dilute acids, acids show dilution, exothermic process and that was the end where I ended. So today I start with base. Now base, this you have done in your previous lesson or I can say class 7, recap, what are the general definition or general properties of base which you have studied. Bases have bitter taste, bases are soapy to touch, bases act on litmus paper, they turn red litmus blue. Bases act with phenolphthalein. the color is pink. Here a very good reaction is there between HCl and NOH. When we do this, the teacher should perform for you and use the indicators to see how the pink color is obtained and how it becomes colorless when the products are formed. Okay, because this phenolphthalein is colorless in an acidic solution. Right? Now, conduct electricity. The bases conduct electricity. Why? Because they break into ions. Which ions you will see here now? The reaction with acids. Very important. Seven standard. What are they called? Neutralization. These are the general properties of base. Now comes, and this neutralization reaction, you can write, I have given you the example of two NOH aquas, always write the state, plus H2SO4, sodium sulfate, plus water. This is the uh, one example, you can write NOH, HCl, salt and water. The products found on neutralization are salt and water. It's a very, very important reaction of uh, base, and this neutralization reactions has many applications in our life, you will see that. Next property of base comes, the bases react with metals, like acid reacts with metals, base also reacts with metals, NOH with xenon produces sodium zincate, Na2 xenonoblue group plus hydrogen. This sodium hydroxide can also react with aluminium to produce, to produce a salt, which you try and keep. Then the next important reaction is, all the metals, all the bases, they react with non-metals. Non-metals I have taken the example of carbon dioxide. Here it can be sulfur dioxide, it can be any other, right? CO2, SO2, whichever non-metal. And you should remember the non-metal oxides are acidic in nature. Like sulfur dioxide, if you compare magnesium, magnesium oxide and sulfur dioxide, a quick recap, MgO is basic in nature. Magnesium is metal. So metal oxides are basic in nature. And non-metal oxides are acidic in nature. SO2 plus water, we collect A standard, forms sulfurous acid and sulfurous acid when we take the litmus paper into it, the it changes to, the blue changes to red if you recollect that. So the non-metals are producing acidic oxides. Here I take a base, calcium hydroxide plus CO2, they form CaCO3 plus water, okay? This is the general properties of base. Now we come to the chemical nature of base. What is the chemical nature of base? Like what is the chemical nature of acids, if it will be asked. The chemical nature of acids are, they produce hydronium ions, as I told you in the previous video. H plus or H3O plus, right, hydronium ions. So the chemical nature of a base is, the base when dissolved in water produces ions. It dissociates into ions, positive and negative, sodium ion, hydroxide ion, any base, potassium hydroxide plus 
water K plus OH minus. So these are the common properties which are base shear. Now, very important thing at your level for 10th standard level is what is a what should be the difference between a base and an alkali? Very frequently asked question. Base and alkali. Right. Now, alkalis, how, what is an alkali? Uh, the bases which dissolve in water is known as, as an alkali. For example, all alkalis are bases. This is the rule of chemistry. All alkalis are bases, but all bases are not alkalis. Now, these alkalis, they don't neutralize an acid. They don't neutralize an acid. They don't try, they, they never show neutralization reaction which a base will show. The base will uh, react with an acid to show neutralization reaction. It will not dissolve in water, but an alkali is that base which dissolves in water. So, all alkalis are bases, but all bases are not alkali. Keep in mind, alkali and base. Then comes, as I said, acids, the addition of acid when we are done, you, you saw that it's an exothermic process. Acid is added to water, water is not added to acid. Here also, when we take a base and we add water to it, it is an exothermic reaction, it produces heat, right? You can test this in the lab with your teacher. Then, next is, if they ask you, just quickly if they ask you, main three bases and give their uses. You can give the use of caustic soda, which is uh, nothing but NOH, the chemical nature, the chemical name, caustic soda, made, used in making soaps, rayon. Then another one is caustic potash, which is nothing but KOH, very strong base there. KOH used for absorbing CO2 and also for making nickel iron batteries, right? Another one is CH2, another base. This base is used for bleaching powder, which you will see. So this was all about base, which is there in your book, and also go through the NCRT book and the equations given uh, in your NCRT book, what I told you here regarding the acid and base, and how you we compare acid and base, and if they ask you compare the physical properties, compare the chemical properties of acids and base. And so far, the activities given in your book, activity 2.1, just quick recap of uh, uh, how the samples of HCl, sulfuric acid, sodium acetate, NOH is given and you, you are putting indicators into it and testing their uh, colors, activity 2.1, activity 2.2 for olfactory indicators, then activity 2.3 for evolution of hydrogen gas, then also comes the another activity, carbon dioxide. Please keep in mind the diagrams given in your book. The diagrams are very well asked, right? Now for bases, much activities are not given here. Very less is given for base, but I gave you these points which you keep in mind. And then a quick comparison of acid and base I have done. So this, with this, I uh, finished the LMR, the last minute revision for base. What is a salt? How can you define a salt? What are the various types of salt? What do the salts have in common? And how how is the salt useful in our daily life? Say the NaCl. The most common salt is the NaCl which we use in our everyday life. And this NaCl which we use in our everyday life can give rise to many other compounds, many other compounds which we will see. So the first thing here comes is how will you define a salt? Salt is an ionic compound. It's an ionic compound, a compound containing a positive part and a negative part. The positive part is called as the cation and the negative part is known as the anion. Salt. It contains two parts, positive and negative, cation and anion. It is compulsory. Now this salt has, uh, we can say there are various salt families from which the salts are obtained. Like we can say how a salt is obtained. A salt is obtained by action of acid plus base gives rise to salt plus water. Action of by action of uh, metal on uh, acid we get salt. Then metal carbonates and uh, acid we get a salt. So uh, this question can again be asked: What are the various ways in which a salt is obtained? General ways, which I said. Then what is a salt acid? Next question is family of salts. Salt has their own family, you know, the family. Like we stay in a family. So salts also have their own family. Which kind of family? The family from which they come. See the salt coming from sulfuric acid are called as sulfates. 
the salts coming from hydrochloric acid are called as chlorides the salts coming from carbonates carbonic acid like h2 co3 is known as carbonates you should keep in mind the formulas of some sulfates some chlorides some carbonates the salt family now this salt which i am talking about has their own ph ph i will tell you at the end which means the strength of the hydrogen ion concentration and in that particular salt what kind of ph it has uh, whether the hydrogen ion concentration is more or the oh ion concentration is more if both of them are same the salt will have a neutral ph or the salt can also have a strongly acidic ph or a weakly uh, acidic ph or a strong base or a weak base now i am telling you the salts can also be classified as a strongly acidic strongly acidic another thing strongly basic weakly acidic weakly basic now what does the word strongly acidic mean strongly acidic means when that acid dissociates completely full dissociation into hydronium ions completely breaks full break strongly acidic like the salt obtained from hcl h2so4 that those salts are strongly acidic the salts which are strongly basic salts coming from noh koh they dissociate into hydroxide ions they are strongly basic the salts which are weakly acidic like the salt from you can say weakly acidic acidic acid weakly acid weakly basic ammonium hydroxide nh4oh the salt which will come from there will be nh4cl nh4oh plus hcl will give rise to the salt i am not writing the equations i am telling you the questions which can be asked for you only from the common topic salt what are salts what are the family of salts what are the various types of salts okay now after this we come to the next important topic which is given in your textbook is if you can open your book when i teach i teach from the ncert book and this is a bible for you you should keep your book in front of you to understand anything right there is one diagram there in your book figure 2.8 okay very important the important products of one very important process the name of that process is where the common salt NaCl is used NaCl is used chlor alkali process co-chlor alkali process for this is a very very important reaction which i have written here and why i have written there NaCl separately because this NaCl is used for making all types of salts here which you will read in your book in your book the first salt given is uh, the first product given is which is used for from nacl sodium hydroxide naoh and for that the word chlor alkali process then comes baking soda then comes washing soda then comes uh, uh, gypsum and pop okay and the first and also bleaching powder is there so this chlor alkali process what is this chlor alkali process and what and how it takes place and what are the products which are formed here here when we say that aqueous solution of naoh aqueous solution of nacl is used and it shows and it uh, and electricity is passed through electrolysis and we show electrolysis uh, on it then the ions of that particular salt nacl it dissociates into what NaCl plus water electrolysis they breaks it breaks into NaOH Cl2 and hydrogen three products it breaks into three products now the Cl2 chlorine hydrogen and sodium hydroxide because electrolysis is taking place so definitely cathode and anode will be there Cl2 chlorine is formed at the anode hydrogen is formed at the cathode and NaOH is also formed near the cathode this is also they asked for board exam what are the anode cathode 
and which products are formed there. Okay, and the and the sodium hydroxide, which is formed here, is known by the word caustic soda. This NaOH and these three products which are formed here have their own uses here. And the and this because the process of electrolysis of aqueous solution of sodium chloride leads to these three products. The whole process is known as chloride alkali process. Chlor for uh, chlorine and alkali for uh, this NaOH which is produced here because NaOH is an alkali and also. These three products have their very their own uses. Okay, NaOH is used in paper industry for making soaps. Chlorine, for example, it is used as a in making of bleaching powder, CFCs, uh, chloroform, PVCs, etc. Then what about hydrogen? Hydrogen is used for hydrogenation of oil, vegetable oil. We will read this in the lesson card. And also for rocket fuel. So the three products of uh, chlor alkali process. It's given in your book. See the diagram there. And when hydrogen is formed, it will gain an electron. Always remember. And when chlorine will be formed, it will lose an electron. At which end, uh, cathode end and anode end. Remember the diagram. Figure two point eight of your NCERT book. This was regarding caustic soda. Now the next reaction, which we will see, is about. Uh, I come to, you know, I come to washing soda. Now this washing soda. is another very important substance which we use in our everyday life okay this washing soda is obtained from sodium chloride it is again obtained from sodium chloride how it is obtained from sodium chloride cold uh, solution of nacl that is brine aqueous solution of nacl ammonia is passed through it nacl plus nh3 plus h2o plus co2 gives rise to nahco3 uh, sorry nahco3 Plus NH4Cl, and now this NaHCO3, when we heat this washing soda, it breaks into Na2CO3 plus CO2 plus H2. It is a, it is obtained as a white precipitate, and this Na2CO3 can then be combined with 10 molecules of water to give rise to Na2CO3 dot dead H2O. This dot means water of crystallization. This is also there in your lesson. So the three reactions. For washing soda is given here, which you can see here. And this washing soda exists in two forms: anhydrous form and hydrous form. Anhydrous form is known by the word soda ash (Na2CO3). No water of crystallization is there. It is known as soda ash. And with water of crystallization, uh, so sodium carbonate decahydrate. So ten molecules are there. And what are the uses of this? Where it is used? it is used in uh, in detergents in making of borax in making of glass factories paper industries etc so this was about washing soda chemical formula na2co3 dot 10h2 na2co3 plain without water molecules soda ash with water molecules sodium carbonate decahydrate this is washing soda second important product obtained from brine first product was caustic soda and this one is this third one now we come baking soda a very common product household product used in your homes where you make cakes etc bread etc now how is this and is there baking soda made what is the chemical formula of baking soda baking soda is made from nacl plus ammonia plus co2 plus h2o gives rise to nhco3 Plus NH4Cl, baking soda, NHCO3, NHCO3, sodium bicarbonate. Now this NHCO3, very important property. When it gets heated, it gets dissociated into Na2CO3 plus CO2 plus H2. It is getting dissociated with the effect of heat into these three products. Now that is why this baking soda is used in making of pakoras and all. Effect of heat. But where we 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 are using we, in the market we use baking powder. It is baking soda is NaHCO3 and baking powder is which we are using. And what is that baking powder? In this question again they ask when baking soda is is having a bitter taste actually. But this when it is mixed with a mild acid like tartaric acid or citric acid, a pleasant smell and a taste comes. So that it it, it neutralizes it. And that is why baking powder is used, not baking soda. Again, this is a frequently asked question. Okay, 
So this was about baking soda. Uses are it is this uh, it is used as an antacid uh, and also for fire extinguishing baking soda. You can test it if anywhere uh, fire is there. You can see that how it can uh, extinguish the fire. The next salt which is given in your book is bleaching powder. Bleaching powder. Now what uh, which is the reactions here? What are the reactions here? Calcium hydroxide COH twice plus Cl2 produces calcium oxychloride CaOCl2 plus water. CaOCl2 plus water. Now this is a very important reaction. Why? Because here they are showing you bleaching powder is made up of three uh, components: calcium, oxygen, and CO2. But this same bleaching powder, when it is treated with acid, let it be H2O4, so let it be HCl, it breaks into calcium sulfate plus CO2 plus H2O. Now this breaking of this into this, and where chlorine is liberated, this chlorine is known as the available chlorine. Higher the available chlorine, pure is the bleaching powder. So the bleaching powder is tested on this available how uh, free how uh, much chlorine is formed. So as per that, the purity of the bleaching powder depends on. And the uses of uh, bleaching powder is it is used as a for bleaching cotton in linen industries, textile industries, and also as a disinfectant. So till now. We read about caustic soda. We read about washing soda. We read about baking uh, baking soda. Then we read about bleaching powder. The last but never the least salt, which is given in your book, you can see is the plaster of Paris and gypsum on your last page. Plaster of Paris and gypsum. Right now, this plaster of Paris and gypsum. Now, plaster of Paris (POP) is made from calcium sulfate dot two H two O. This is gypsum. This is the formula for gypsum. You have to very well keep in mind what is the number of water molecules, which I will not tell you about water of crystallization. This salt, that is gypsum, when it is heated at 373 Kelvin or 100 degrees Celsius, it dissociates into calcium sulfate dot half water molecule plus one and half water. So this calcium sulfate dot half H2. O is very important to keep calcium sulfate hydrated. Otherwise, if this uh, reaction is incomplete or if it doesn't take place properly, or the calcium sulfate is produced without half H two O, we get uh, dead plaster, dead plaster, and that dead plaster is of no use. If they ask you, what is dead plaster? Dead plaster is that POP which without water of crystallization, and this half H two O helps. In molding and just and giving the shapes and all, all. that is why this much water crystallization is required. And this again, when this is combining with one and a half, reverses back to form gypsum. So gypsum is the raw material used to make POP. And uses of POP, as I told you, it is used for uh, uh, making uh, uh, molds and also setting bones, fractures, medical sciences, etc. Now, water crystallization. The definition for this is: What is this water of crystallization? Water of crystallization is, uh, say, the salt. A salt is a crystal. Huh? All salts are crystalline solids. So the amount of uh, water which is being carried by that crystal, that crystal, and that amount of water being carried by the crystal is fixed. Or, or a better definition for water of crystallization can also be uh, given as: If you want to write, you can write. And I'm just telling you, it's very important. The water molecules which form part of the structure of the crystal of a salt is called as water of crystallization. Okay. And this water of crystallization uh, is not the free water; the amount is fixed. And also, this water of crystallization gives the shape, gives the color to that particular crystal or salt. And for this. In your book, one activity of copper sulfate, CuSO4 dot CuSO4 dot 5H2 is given. Where they have taken a test tube and they are holding it against the water, again against a burner. Activity 2.9, and they are seeing what are the changes which takes place in this uh, salt when it is heated. So when it is heated, it is there in your practical also. You will observe that the color of the salt changes. 
moisture comes from the inner side of the test tube and when you keep it for some time the color comes back to it again so this water crystallization is again this you are read in the first lesson of chemical reactions ferrous sulfate heating of ferrous sulfate thermal decomposition because this lesson is related with the first lesson if they will ask you this reaction say NaOH and HCl which kind of reaction it is combination reaction decomposition reaction or which reaction like you should keep in mind your previous lesson also uh, for this second lesson because the chemistry is in it is like a chain you cannot forget your previous and do the present okay so I was talking about water of crystallization what it is what role it plays so for your LMR I gave you the definition which activity will give you a few words copper heating of copper sulfate or heating of ferrous sulfate now we come to the last part of the lesson which I told I will take in the end and that is nothing but the pH nothing but the pH which I want to tell you here pH because I want to draw one diagram here You can open your textbook page number where this word pH is given. Page number 25. Now, pH was discovered by Sorensen. pH is the power to which the hydrogen ion concentration is based. pH is inversely proportional to the hydrogen ion concentration. pH stands for the word potence. It's given in your book, means power means we measure the pH of a solution with the power of hydrogen ion concentration. For this a scale is there, pH scale. pH scale. A pH scale is there. This pH scale neutral 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, zero this is this range and this range as we go here as we go here lower the hydrogen ion concentration stronger is the acidity of that particular solution from 0 to 7 as we go in this side the acidity increases because the hydrogen ion concentration increases hydroxide concentration decreases here H plus increases, OH minus decreases. Okay, and this is for this side. What about this side? The pH scale here 2, 14, here 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 10 to the power minus 8, 10 to the power minus 9, like this, 10 to the power minus 14. This one is strongly basic. So like acidic nature, the basicity increases this time. Means the hydro hydroxide ion concentration increases and hydrogen ion concentration decreases. And this is nothing but neutral as I have written you. As I written you. So the pH, pH as I told you just now is nothing but the, and this which I have drawn here is the pH scale. Increasing acidic character, increasing basic character, Increasing H plus ion concentration, decreasing OH ion concentration, increasing OH concentration, decreasing H plus concentration. And the range, this range, 0 to 2, strongly acidic, uh, moderately acidic, weakly acidic. So in your board, they can ask you questions about strongly acidic, weakly acidic, moderately acidic. They can also ask in assertion reasoning, two solutions are there, X and Y. Say two solutions are there, like I, I ask you one question. You have two solutions A and B. The pH of solution A is 6 and the pH of solution B is 8. Which solution will have more hydrogen ion concentration? Which solution is acidic and which one is basic? Such questions. Another question which can be asked here. Five solutions A, B, C, D and E when tested with another word which I have written here, universal indicator. 
shows pH 4, 1, 11, 7 and 19. Now which solution is neutral, which is strongly alkaline, strongly acidic, weakly acidic, weakly alkaline. Arrange the pH in the increasing order of hydrogen ion concentration. Such questions. Now before you do such questions, you should understand the concept of universal indicator. Now what is the universal indicator? Universal indicator, now this say pH. pH, uh, pH like an indicator and it, like litmus, litmus is an indicator. Litmus is an indicator, it tells you whether the solution is acidic or basic. But any indicator doesn't tell you the strength of the solution. The accurate strength, how much acidic it is, how much basic it is. That is told only by an universal indicator. So the definition of universal indicator is that it is a mixture of many different dyes. A mixture of many important dyes or indicators which gives different colors and different pH values on the entire pH scale. Told you this definition. And for this, we get a strip of this. You get a pH color chart paper. You get it is there in your lab, which is having various colors. Uh, say dark red to green, and in between is some violet color. Violet, green, and red is the more is the color of this pH indicator. If I draw a pH indicator scale, it can be like this. It can be like this. As I told, this is neutral, central part neutral. And as for the definition, a combination of many pH papers or mixture of dyes. And this forms the universal indicator where the values are written, where the values are written. Say this is because this is 7, this will be 6, then 5, then 4, then 3, then 2, then 1. Like this here will be 8, 9, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, this. So, more, and the system may be the same, more acidic. More basic. More acidic, more basic. And the colors will be different. The colors will be different. Like this will be red, then this will be some orangish red, here it will be yellow, red, orangish red, yellow. Like that here it will be some bluish green and it will be violet, light. Uh, little lighter shade of violet, if you can see. So I told you the difference between uh, pH, universal indicator and the pH of a neutral solution is always green. Always it is green. The water will produce a green color. If you ask you what color water will produce, water will produce a green color with universal indicators. So you should know the colors of some of the solutions like uh, if the color is dark red, the pH is 0. If the color is red, it is 1. If it is again orangish red, it is 3. If it is uh, orangish yellow, it means the pH is 5. If it is green, it is 7. They can ask you, that, uh, giving you the color, what is the pH of the particular solution. If it is violet, completely violet, it is 14. If it is uh, uh, dark purple, it is 12. As I told you, the range of the color. Green, uh, dark violet, violet. Okay, here it is. Blue, dark violet, violet. And from here, the color is here. The maximum is red. Last color which is here is red. Uh, 10 to the power minus 1 will be highly acidic, but it will be red. So I think, and also in your book now, you have seen, you will be seeing the applications of pH. How pH is useful in an everyday life. Uh, pH in the tooth decay, alkaline paste, tooth decay, basic paste. pH of our uh, body system, uh, how excess HCl is produced to balance that antacid is given, that value of the pH in our digestive system, pH in our tooth. Then the self defense system which animals and plants have through chemical welfare, the topic with what happens when anything stinks on you, methanoic acid is released. To balance that, we rub uh, sodium bicarbonate, right? So this is a very important application of pH in our everyday life. So I think I have uh, given you the uh, last minute revision of the entire lesson, acid, base and salt. Uh, as I recapitulated the lesson, as a lesson acid for you today, uh, at the end part, I recapitulate the base part, the basic part. We started with the lesson base. We started with the topic base. In base, we did with 
what are the properties of base and what are the reactions of base and how acids and base can be compared with their chemical and physical properties i also wrote about all that told you that what are the common bases what do all the bases share in common and i try to also tell you about the salts what is a salt how the salts are formed what is a salt family and what are uh, four types of salts which are formed then told you about the chloro alkali process what's a chloro alkali process the products formed in chloro alkali process and uh, like nmh cl2 h2 then what the products other products are baking soda washing soda bleaching powder uh, plaster of paris gypsum and the end we came to water crystallization after that we came to ph so i think uh, i am complete with this lesson of acid base and salt also told you to do your book activities and i think i am clear with my topic so till i get the next video stay geeky and keep liking and subscribing the channel the science geek thank you